Hello everybody and welcome back to another math learning video. Today I brought you guys this geometry problem here where we are given a right triangle with one known side length, the, this I'd call it our a value of 10. And what we need to do is we need to find the two missing values to make this right triangle work, right? So the R, B, and C. So you may be thinking there are like infinite combinations, right? But here we are given a restriction that B and C, these values, have to be inside the natural number. So that means that they have to be integers. And integers are whole numbers, right? So no fractions, no decimals, no, no nothing like that. They need to be whole numbers, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So since it's a right triangle, obviously what we need to do is we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is like this, right? a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And we are given our a squared, right? We are giving, given our 10. So that means that 10 squared plus b squared, 10 squared is what? 10 times 10 is equal to 100, right? Plus b squared is equal to c squared. So what am I going to do next? Well, now I I want to get the 100 by itself, so I want to get the variables together. So I'm going to subtract b squared from both sides, okay? So that leaves us with 100 is equal to c squared minus b squared. So what does that leave, off with, leave us off with? So 100 is equal to c squared minus b squared. Does this form, the way that this is written, look familiar to you? Well, it is, I believe, the third binomial formula where it states that a squared minus b squared, or I think it's actually called the, the square, perfect square formula, where a squared minus b squared, so this is just other variables, right, unrelated to our problem, is equal to a squared, no, not a squared, sorry, but a plus b times a minus b, okay? So in this case, we need to use our concurring variables, the matching variables. So instead of a, I'm going to use the c that is in our problem, right? So this will be, a c is the, our a in this case, and the b can still say the b. So this will be c plus b, c minus b. Okay, so we got that 100 is equal to C plus B and C minus B. So where do we go next? So we know that these two terms added together have to equal to 100. And if we think about it, we know that these two terms have to be integers, right? Natural numbers, real numbers. So what does that mean? That means that there are only so many possibilities that there could be for these two terms. So these two terms, so what are the possible factors of 100? So first of all, we got 10 times 10, right? Then we have, what else? 20 times 5, 25 times 4, 50 times 2, and then finally 100 times 1. And that is all of them. So what we can do is we can just check if we make these terms, the c plus b and the c minus b, these corresponding terms, if we can make it these factors here, and if this will work to solve for our hypotenuse triangle. So let, let, let me show you what I mean by that. So if we make, if we want to use 10 times 10, that means that both these terms have to be equal to 10, right? So if we have our c plus b is equal to 10, and then c minus b is equal to 10, we can create a system of equations where we can then add them together. So please, so it's 2c plus c is equal to 2c plus b minus b, they cancel out, is equal to 20. So then we get that c is equal to 10. However, so you may be thinking, oh, that's an integer, that would work. However, you think about it, on a right triangle, the hypotenuse has to be the longest side length, right? But here, if our c is equal to 10, 
and our a is also equal to 10, that means that the hypotenuse is the same length as our a, and that just cannot be. So therefore, 10 is, is uh, crossed out. It is not our correct answer. So now let's go ahead and check with our next possible answer, which is 20 times 5. So if these are equal to 20 and 5, that means that c plus b is equal to 20, right? And then c minus b is equal to 5. So that gives us that 2c, because we add these equations together, and then these cancel out. 2c is equal to 25. And if we solve for c, we get that c is equal to 12.5. And this does not work. Do you guys know why? Well, it's because our b and c are in the natural numbers. This means that they need to be integers, right? 12.5 has a decimal. Therefore, it is not an integer. Therefore, this is not a correct possible value for us. So now on to the next one. We are 25 times 4. So c plus b is equal to 25. c minus b is equal to 4. Also, I forgot to mention, you may be thinking, why do I put 25 on the left one and the 4 on the right one? Why did I kind of take this for granted? Well, it's because if you think about it, c plus b, you're adding the two values together, the two positive values together. They are automatically, it's automatically going to be bigger than c minus b where you're subtracting, right? Therefore, the left side has to be the bigger value because it's addition. So now we got c plus b is equal to 25, and c minus b is equal to 4, so we get that 2c is equal to 29, and if I divide that, I get that c is equal to 14.5, which, like before, is not an integer. Therefore, we can cross this out also, so that leaves us with two possible Answer still, so we need to check for both of them. So 50 times 2. So our c plus b is equal to 50, or c minus b is equal to 2. So c plus b equal to 50, c minus b equal to 2. We get that our 2c is equal to 52. And here, if we divide 2, we get that our c is equal to... 26, right? So if our C is equal to 26, that means that C minus B, 26 minus B has to equal 2. So that means that our B is equal to 24, right? We can also check it here. 26 plus 24 is equal to 50. Yes, that is correct. So we got that our C is 26 and B is equal to 24. So this looks like the right answer, okay? Not gonna lie to you. However, just to make sure, let's just make sure that it's not this 100 times one, okay? So, so C equals 26, B equals 24, looks like it works. But just to make sure, let's go ahead and check for 101. So C plus B is equal to 100, C minus B is equal to one. So that means that C plus B is 100, C minus B is equal to 1. We get that 2C is 101, and that is, I believe, C is equal to 50.5, which is not an integer. So it is not correct. So we kind of got our answer that we solved for C and our B. However, just to make sure, we can always check the easiest way, which is just plugging it into the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So if we, if the statement comes out to be true, if we plug in B and C in our A here, then that means that we did it correctly. So A squared plus B squared, A squared is 10 squared plus 24 squared, because that's our B, is equal to 26 squared. So 10 squared is equal to 100. 24 squared, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna have to go grab my calculator. So 24 squared is equal to 576, and 26 squared is equal to 676. And this works out perfectly, because 100 plus 576 is 676. And this proves that our answer of our B 
being equal to 24 and our C being equal to 26? Correct. So this is our final answer, okay? So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.